But yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a, a video. I'm stuck doing video content for the next few days. As you guys already know, I'm stuck with jury duty and all of that crap. So streams are going to be at a minimum for the next two weeks. But we will still be here talking about Chelsea. So don't worry, we're not disappearing. We're not taking a temporary break, just like half the team is for the international break and everything. We will be here as regularly as we can be. Even though I'm basically locked up, in spite of the fact that I'm literally on the jurors. But it is what it is. Big up to everybody that's locked in, though. Here to talk about Chelsea fans and are we too harsh on our players? I've seen a lot of talk from Matt Law and from a bunch of Chelsea fans talking about Raheem Sterling and the reception that he's been getting over the last few weeks. And also just... I've seen Matt Law talking about Chelsea fans in general and the way we're so quick to turn on our own and all of that. And like, what? Why Why is it every single day I, I see a reporter waffling about our football club and waffling about our fan base? Like, forgive me for seeing that our fan base has a semblance of the standards left from the Roman era and we're going to sit here and complain about it. Have some shame, but I know it's Matt Law. And Matt Law just loves spewing negativity about Chelsea Football Club. So we're going to decipher all of this crap. We're going to talk about whether it's okay to boo football players. And is, should we just smile and be happy and just accept mediocre performances? Or should we actually just have some bollocks like the rest of Europe do and the rest of the other fans outside of England usually do? As you guys can tell, you already know my stance on this BS, but we will get into it. We will get into it. So Matt Law said, The strength of feeling aimed towards Raheem Sterling in in recent weeks, which boiled over during the Leicester game, surprised some Chelsea insiders who thought they'd seen it all before. Okay. Um, a Chelsea player representative has been surprised at, at just how quickly some of the fans... He has sat and stood among can turn on their own. And he is adamant that a number of players inside the Chelsea squad are very much aware of it. Good, I hope they're also aware of our position in the Premier League table. But, alright, we'll continue to go on. The players know, he said. They hear it and pick up on it. They say they can ignore it or block it out, but it has an impact. Here's the thing. I, I would hope it does have an impact. Like, I understand that being criticised during a game can impact a player's performance, be it positive or negative. But honestly, when you're playing at the top level, it, it should be an expectation that the fans are going to be very vocal on your performance, be it whether you're playing well or very poorly. And especially at a club of Chelsea stature, like, don't get it twisted just because we're mid-table. Don't get, don't act like we're not one of the biggest clubs in the world right now. And we are sitting in 11th place. Mid-table. For yet another season. And they want the fans to just smile and be okay with it. Like, I'm honestly not surprised. I think it's taken the fans way too long to start being overly critical and to start being vocal at the football stadiums. But... Hey, I'm glad we got there. Better late than never. Like, we are in 11th place in March. Anybody, anybody can get it. If, you, if your name isn't Caicedo or Palmer or Gusto, or you could argue maybe De Sassi or Petrovic, but even then I'm only really going to keep it to the three, Gusto, Palmer and Caicedo. If you're not any of them three, hold the smoke. Be it however small or however big your your part is to play in us being in 11th place. You are culpable. You are very culpable. So, sorry if you're hearing boos. Sorry if you're hearing a disgruntled fan base. We should not be in this position. It is not acceptable for Chelsea to be in this position. It's, it should never be acceptable after all the years that we spent at the top under Roman Abramovich, it shouldn't be acceptable to go into mid-table and to just smile and be happy and accept all that crap. Like, no. Especially if we're going to single out someone like Raheem Sterling. All right, cool. Let's talk about Sterling. He is, he is one of the only experienced players that we have in this squad. And he is majorly underperforming. In the last two seasons... 
He's not done much other than fail to show any level of consistency. Is ridiculously lazy out of possession. Unbelievably frustrating when it comes to transitional play and 1v1s. I genuinely think he's the worst Chelsea player I have ever seen at 1v1s. And seems to just get by off the fact that he's a volume player. And the fact that you will just give him a good amount of chances and eventually he will put something in. That's why we said on previous videos, criticize Sterling all you want, he will eventually get you GNA. But the problem is, how long does it take for you to get to that point? How many times have we said that a game should be killed in the first half? And there's been so many instances of Sterling being selfish in possession which has killed the opportunity for us to potentially see games off early on in the match. And it's not just him either. Gallagher comes for a lot of criticism. Chilwell comes for a lot of criticism. Cucurella, Jackson, Mudrick, Enzo. I could keep going. Sanchez. De Sassi. Even De Sassi does. Badia Shields come up for criticism. Thiago Silva has. So many players have. Because we are underachieving. How hard is that to understand? We are underachieving as a football club. And when that happens, you can be culpable for holding smoke. Let's not act like this is the only time this has happened. I've seen so much following Chelsea over the last 20 or so years. I've seen Didier Drogba getting booed after scoring a goal against Manchester City back in 06. I've seen Fernando Torres register 29 goals and assists in a season and still be labelled a flop and still be criticised week in and week out at Stamford Bridge because he wasn't performing to a consistent level. I've seen Ashley Cole getting ripped in his last season at Chelsea because he was on a decline. I've seen Gary Cahill in 17-18, getting ripped after, I think, playing nearly every minute for us in 16-17 and the run to a league title. David Luiz cussed out all the time because he was a bozo moment waiting to happen half the time. Jorginho, I'm sure we all remember how much of a divisive figure he was. Werner, he got 27 GNA and he stunk half the time. Mason Mount, <laughs> we already know about him. Kai Havertz, you already know my thoughts on him. I could keep going. The amount of players who have come out for criticism because their performances have not been good enough. Diego Costa, Cesc Fabregas, literally being booed after Jose Mourinho got sacked in 2015. And what we're going to say, Raheem Sterling is the turning point. We've never seen this before from Chelsea fans. Huh? This is, this is a normal thing to do when a team is underperforming. Not just at Chelsea, but in Europe in general. Hell, I I've seen Cristiano Ronaldo getting booed by Real Madrid fans in his prime. And he responded by getting four goals in the same match. I've seen Leon fans attacking their own coach. I've seen Sporting Lisbon fans raiding the training ground because of underperformances. I've seen, I've seen PSG fans... Go after Neymar and Messi. Because they underperformed in the Champions League. Not even in the league. And, and all this is, is just fans holding players accountable. But as soon as it comes to England, as soon as it becomes a Chelsea thing, we're in the wrong. We're, we're the wrong party. Us, the fans, we need to be more accepting. It's a process and all of that crap. Spare me that BS. We are 11th in March. Anybody can get it from the manager to the individuals. And if you're not the three that I mentioned earlier, it is what it is. It is what it is. This is what happens when the standards are high and the standards are high at one of the biggest clubs in the world. It is as simple as that. Like I've seen more, like I saw Nizar Kinsella saying um, he feels, Sterling feels like he's trying to win over a group of fans who have never made him feel welcome. Well, bro, like to a point, I understand it. But you've never really given that consistency for the fans to ever back you. Especially for someone who's on 300k plus a week. We need to be seeing a lot more from him. So, if you want to silence all of your critics, get consistent. Actually, be the main man that we paid you that money to be. That we brought you in to be. Because right now, all you are is just, you're the OG you're the OG to all the younger players, to so the Palmers, the Chakumekas, the Madueikis. 
They look up to you, but when we watch you play on the pitch, you ain't it. You ain't it at all. So, it's up to you. Like, if you can't get your performances in check, if you continue to drop performances like you did on Sunday, I can't say you don't deserve to be booed. I can't say it. I was going to say as well, I don't condone booing and everything, but the more I deep it, this is about maintaining standards at a football club. I get it. I get it. If I was at that ground on Sunday, I would have booed Sterling too. I would have, I would have joined in. Because he was performing so badly, wasting so many chances. I get it. Because he's the one who's going to get 300k a week plus. He is the one who's going to see 315k a week go into his bank account for that performance. Those fans, they spent about 40, 50 quid on that performance. They're the ones that put money into that. He's the one getting money from that. So if you put your money on the table, you're allowed to be vocal. And if you don't like it, you can hold that. You can hold that because that is that is what big clubs are about. It's about maintaining your standards. And I'm never going to speak ill of the fans for trying to keep those standards high. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that crap. Big up everybody. And up the chels. Potch out, as always.